And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone that is coming to hear the Weighing In Podcast. You have come to the best podcast on MMA there is. And that's because I got my man, Josh Thompson, coming back from Dallas, Texas, Hilo, Hawaii, all these places he keeps traveling so he could be home for a day to pack for one day and then go to Paris. To Paris. (laughs) <laughs> one to That's literally like up, dude. 28 hours or 29 hours or some shit. Oh, it's going to be horrible. Hey, so much but we'll fun. all be together again here soon, buddy. Dude, hey, it's line bike time. Yeah, it is line bike time. That's how we tour Paris. But John said it, man, the best podcast, best MMA and combat sports podcast on the market right now. And I'm letting you guys know. Hit that subscribe button. Tell Josh. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little thumbs up. That helps the algorithm push our podcast out there. You guys got to do the work for us. I want to thank you guys. We do the work for you. You do the work for us. See how this all kind of pat each other on the back. We help each other out. So want to simpatico. <laughs> okay, that's a word. <laughs> Uh, I've never heard before. Is it? <laughs> you never heard that word? No, I've never heard that word. In, Te- in simpatico. Tell me what it means. It means together, in sequence. Oh, in, in yeah. you're together. Oh, you learn something new every day. That's why you just sit together and stop confusing people. <laughs> oh, will you shut up, you Scottish bastard? <laughs> he's he's an American now, buddy. He's legal. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know he's been legal for a, a year or so now, but... Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, we're just we're, we're letting them all we're letting them all in anyway. At least <laughs> podcast Dave knows more about the Constitution than most Americans do. <laughs> this so. is true. Well, actually, uh, he is an American. He so is now. I just celebrated uh, twelve years on Friday. Yeah, but you haven't been legal for twelve, 12 years. years. You've been legal for twelve years. It's been legal for like a year. Uh, you're right. I've not. Yeah, I've been legal for like a year, uh, but I've been in the states for fucking twelve. He kept jumping his visas. I can finally. They're like, they're like, you know what? We're like, Josh, we're letting everyone in from the southern please. border. Fuck it. Let's just let the Scottish dude in too. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Please renew my visa, Josh. Please renew uh, my yeah. visa. Oh, man. All right. Well, hey, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. I want to thank you guys for continuing to support our show. And, uh, man, we've got a lot to cover from this weekend. Boy, we so do. many things going on. Some, some news. All the fights, obviously. And uh, before we get started, make sure you guys go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and subscribe to us over there. All of our content will be starting. Kind of, not all of our content, but there'll be some content moving over there. Just... Uh, specifically for that platform so make sure you guys subscribe over there it is free and uh, go to wayneinmerch.com pick up some of our gear and our clothing john and i neither one of us are wearing it right now but we want to thank you guys for purchasing no, we're too lazy and you guys have been uh posting pictures and we've been retweeting and reposting them so thank you guys for continuing to support us over there it's getting to be uh, almost hat season and uh short sleeve season so head over there and uh, pick up some new short sleeve designs and uh hats all right guys let's go ahead and get into these fights john i mean I've got so much stuff to talk about in terms of my travels, but we can do that throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did have a UFC pay-per-view, UFC 288 mm-hmm. from New Jersey. The Prudential Center with Aljamain Sterling, the champion, taking on Henry Sudo in his return bout. After, eh, let's say about three years being away from the sport, you know, it's a good fight. It was, it was a tough fight. It was a tough fight for both guys. It was one of those ones, you know, ends up being a split decision. I can see how that happened. It was very close. It was the I mean, really a question of, I thought the third round was incredibly clo- close. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I thought the second round was incredibly close. So depending on who you went there, I thought the fifth round was definitely Henry Cejudo, but we had a judge that decided no, it wasn't, but mm. okay. But uh, overall, either guy. Can't complain about the outcome and the judge's decision because it was that close. Both had their moments. Both did well at times, but neither one dominated or did anything that was special in the fight that you could go, there's your big difference. I'm going to get a lot of flack for what I'm about to say. Go. I'm going to get a lot of flack for what I'm about to say. Come on. I'm going to say it definitely wasn't a robbery. I'm definitely going to say that. And I'm going to say that the, oh the, each round, I know, but there's people going, if once they, once they, once I say what I'm going to say, I don't want people thinking I'm thinking it's a robbery. I had Henry winning the fight. That's what I had, but I'm not okay. mad at the, I'm not mad at the decision at all. And I think where I had it two two going into the fifth and I had Henry winning the fifth. And this has nothing okay. to do with 
past relationships but that's, with, with but that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Um, the first round I gave to Aljo only based on the fact Absolutely. that I thought Henry was came back. Yes, at the very end, that big shot, right yeah. at the, almost right at the yeah. bell. That was the most. That was one of the best shots of the he whole. Stole, yeah, he, he stole, stole that round. He stole the round back, and I feel like that beautiful knee that he threw Absolutely. off of that clinch. Yep. Yeah, he did, a, and that like he it was a it was a throw a, a toss up round until that last exchange no. against the fence. Well, look, let's be honest, and this is where people get into the Henry won probably three and a half minutes of that yeah, round. Yeah, he did. Okay, but. I mean, yes, he was winning it, but not, didn't do anything. You know, yeah. got a nice takedown, big deal. You know, Aljamain was never really in, in any trouble. He got himself back up. But when Aljamain took Henry down, he did some work, mm -hmm. and that work brought him back. And again, the most damaging blow of the round yeah. was that knee. Right at the very end. It was a very well-placed, and it was that's a difference mm -hmm. maker, and that's why Aljamain deserved that first round. Yeah. He stole it back because it was Henry's round and he stole it away from him and he deserved it. Absolutely. And then I thought the second round was Henry's. And I thought the third round was Henry's. Now, they were both close, but I thought Henry... Yeah. This is where I think people are going to get a little confused. Or not confused, is that they stake too much claim because I tried not to listen to it with the sound, but I had my earbuds on because I don't like the sound of an airplane because I was watching it on the airplane. John knows. I was asking him because the internet was shitty, certain stuff, so I had to go back and watch. I watched this fight twice already back um i wanted to see henry aljamain was able to get the takedown and henry was able to get it back also and so when i looked at that i go look one was against the fence one was more of like almost like a head like leaning on him and got him down other one was yeah. inside trip back got him got him taken down and i had henry win in the round and towards the end no different than how aljo kind of won it where henry needed to do is have a little bit more action a little bit more activity yeah and that's kind of where I, I i understand if this is where those three yes. years off make a difference but that's where it makes a difference i also think i also believe that the judges in their eyes like when henry had him on all fours and he was moving his head side to side you gotta land something you like hold him, but you had him. You were holding him by the head. Throw, land, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to all of this after I close out on on what I, how I scored the rounds. And I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad. I I actually I can understand exactly where, how the judges looked at it because if I was gonna score it, I had Henry winning winning rounds two and three, and I had him losing round four. And in the same thing, I thought Henry did enough in the fourth, and he had moments where he was able to stuff a lot of takedown. Oh, not the fourth. Sorry, the third. He did yeah, enough to okay. stuff the takedowns. He, did enough, he just didn't have the action in like hitting the body, hitting the hitting the head when he was on all fours. And then I think after the third round, that's when Matt Sarah goes, I don't want you on your all fours anymore. Stop getting to all fours. And then that's when Aljo came out and won the fourth round. Um, This was, it was a very close fight. Um, I thought Aljo fought a very good fight. I thought Henry fought a good fight for someone who was off three years and fight, obviously fighting up in weight. You could see the visible difference in size, especially when they got in there and when they got into the clinch. Which caused Henry to have problems with the range. Yep. Yep. The reach, the range. And honestly, um, yeah. I thought Henry was going to be a little bit, he was going to be the faster fighter, which I feel like he, he was. I feel like he was. He just, the range made it hard for him to get in. So it would, if you, if the, if, Aljamain Sterling bumped him a little bit because of his size and he bumped him a little bit. It made him miss and made him off balance to the point where he couldn't reach him anymore. So he had moments where he, that I wouldn't say he rocked Aljo, but he hit him with a clean shot and then there was no follow up. This was that, this to go back to what you were talking about. Okay. So now that I've said that rounds one, whereas Aljo two and three was Henry rounds four was Aljo and round four, round five, I had Henry winning the fight. That's how I, I, that's how I did it. It was very close. I could see how the judges gave it to Aljo. I could see that. Obviously, I could see that. I, I think Aljo fought a very smart fight. But I think this goes back into the three years like you were talking about. Not only was he not doing the damage when he had the head down with all, on all fours. Um, it, multiple times. It, it was multiple times. Yes. No, yeah, it wasn't just once. It was several times. And he had moments to capitalize on doing some damage, get the crowd on the feet, make them feel like, Oh, wow. Like he's doing work. He's doing work. He's making him swerve his head and he hits him with a clean shot. He could have done any of those things that could have potentially have got the, got the judges a little bit more involved, got the crowd more involved. And you know, we talk about the, the when the crowd gets going, 
it sometimes can sway a judge. Oh, that, that shot landed or it looks like it landed or it just makes it look. And especially when your head is moving, swaying side to side and I connect at the same time you move, it can make it look like I landed a hard, clean shot, even though it probably just grazed. Nope. So all of those things, I play. I think that that really came down to just the, the inactivity for three years. It was, there was moments where he would have done damage before, before he left and he would have had a lot more output. It was almost, and I text you this, I think after the second round, I saw after the second round, he stayed on his knees for about two or two seconds after the bell went and he sat there for a second was like, fuck, almost like soaking it in going, I'm fucking frustrated. Yeah. Not like frustration, but on top of it going fight pace, fight energy, fight. Everything is different. I can do all this stuff in the gym. I don't think I, I, if I'm him and I'm his coaches, don't be done because he can, he can do this. I mean, that's, I'm just in my side. Like he's like, Oh, if I can't fight for the title, bro, Marab's tailor made for you. Like oh, yeah. beat Marab's ass, get right back. And if you beat Marab, then he's going to have to stay. And if he goes up, then you're the, you'll be the champ. There's no doubt. And then you can chase him to 45 that, you know, if that's what you want to do. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. I just think, I think Marab is tailor made for him. And so if, if, if you're going to take a fight, like, look, okay, I'm going to take another fight. And he's got, now he's got the ring rust off and the five rounds in the bag. He knows exactly what he's back on track. He didn't do, he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't make any mistakes. I was getting a little mad at the, at some of the commentary because they kept saying, they kept saying like, oh, the leg kicks are having a f- effect. He didn't start, he didn't switch his stances. He didn't, he didn't. He wasn't flinching. He wasn't hobbling. He wasn't limping. What are you talking about? They, 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 yeah, they hurt. I'm sure they hurt, but he wasn't showing anything that, that said that the leg was hurt. And I, that's why I was like, uh, yeah, he was taking them. He was, he takes, he was taking them more than most people do, which is pretty damn fucking spectacular because those calf kicks, when you start landing them, man, it only, it only takes one, maybe three at the most. And you start, oh shit, I got to start switching my stance. I mean, if, if you're going to start, saying that that's what happened then you're i don't want to say that you're not skewing they're skewing the audience that are listening at home but that that a little that bit. bothered me a little bit that was the late kick thing bothered me a little bit and then also too like i even dc dc was like hey man he goes he was saying that you know that henry needed to get these rounds like he's you know he's kind of fighting from behind i didn't look at it that way i looked at it as like they both needed me if i'm a commentator i need to be saying both these guys need to show themselves that they are winning both these rounds convincing show that they need they need this yes round. they both need to come out oh. and show that they're that they needed to I win agree. this round now i know it ended up going aljo's way which obviously i i think was was fine it's not a big deal not that, as if i have any say in what <laughs> but it was it was a great fight it was very tactical um i also think they gave so much leeway the announcers the commentary and i think also i don't know john maybe you can answer this is it because he's an Olympic gold medalist that it skews that and when Henry took him down, it was like, oh, it was oh Henry doing what he Expected. does, super easy. And then when Aljo took him down, oh, like if you go back and listen to the commentary, the very first takedown that Aljo got, even the second one, oh my gosh, oh, he got it like spectacular. And I was like, he, yeah, oh, it was a takedown. <laughs> God, I didn't know what else to say it. I was like, it did nothing with. Yeah, them. exactly, you know, and that was know, my point. It did nothing in any of and, them, and that's and neither one of them did anything with their takedowns. That's right. And so, I don't know. It, it was, it was. Uh, I I liked the fight. It was very tactical. I thought it was a. I thought it was a really good fight between two of the best to, to ever do it. I just, I, I skewed a little bit. I think from listening to some commentary, and I like both. The, obviously, I like all the commentary guys. It's just. I was like, man, the leg kick thing was bothering me a little bit because Henry wasn't showing any damage. And then DC going like, oh, he's got to, you know, he's down. I think he might be down 3-0. And I'm like, ah, ah, maybe, I guess. But obviously he wasn't. It was a split decision. But I don't know. I, I think, I don't know. Both of them needed to show that they needed to win. They they wanted to win the round convincingly. And kind of neither one of them did. You know? No, actually, I was surprised the way Aljo fought the fifth round. I thought he would come out much more aggressive and he came out much more. I just need to get through the round. Like he felt that he had won, you know, and that's part of his corner is mm-hmm. they're telling him, Hey, you're up and stuff like that. So he's listening to his corner. So that's, 
really part of his job is to listen to his corner. But you look at the fight itself, and I really think the difference was those positions you were talking about when Aljo would go and you'd see Henry locking a front headlock like a wrestler does instead of locking on a particular technique that a mixed martial artist should be locking on. When when you have Aljamain Sterling on all fours, and Matt Serra was completely right when he says, hey, I don't want you going to all yeah. fours anymore. He's right because you're putting yourself in a dangerous position because the Darce choke is there for him. The Anaconda choke is there depending upon where he's at. There's all kinds of things that you can be set up. And now it's a matter of, it may not get you, but it's it's making you defend and it's making you have to work through something that you really don't want to. Henry let those positions go mm. with zero damage. Zero. No submission attempts. Zero damage from strikes. And that's a huge moment for you to take an, an advantage over your opponent and he didn't do it and i think that had a big impact in the outcome of the fight those are the moments that you need to show that hey i'm trying to put this person away i'm going to finish him and i I'm, I'm not too sure that he wasn't in some ways trying to just slow the pace down and make sure that the five rounds wasn't going to be a problem as far as conditioning and it looked like he started to get a little tired. Then he got a second yeah. win and, and he was right back. Yeah. I texted you. I said, I, he looks a little tired, like fatigued, maybe yeah. frustrated, maybe frustrated I think um, a little bit. I had read something somewhere on the, on the internet today that people, people look at Aljo and they go, man, he doesn't look good on the feet. Like he's like, I'm sure I could, his takedowns are not great, but then when they get in there, it's a different feeling. It, well, he's look. He's good. He's very good. He's definitely at good controlling somebody, especially from the clinch. His clinch is good. Yeah, he does great clinch work. He bring you know he 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 sags he sags on guys very well. Puts a lot of weight on to make him carry the weight and everything. He does a lot of things that are just he does them well. Mm -hmm. And when when it gets to the ground game, he's dangerous. You know, he's always looking to either do damage. Or to look for the submission, he may not get it. He's looking to get the back. You know, there was a couple of times he was, you know, in a position in the first round. That's how he won the round. You know, obviously the round ended, so he was taken out of the position. But even later on, he got close to getting the back, and Henry was able to. He had his arm wrapped, so he was never able to get all the way around on him and stuff. But yeah, I, I just look at it and good fight, but a fight that no one can sit there and go. Oh, that was a that was a horrible decision. No, no absolutely not. No, I had Aljo winning. Yep. I thought Aljo was winning yep. it. You know, and we, we we had that when we were going back and forth. But it was I I I was being honest when I was, looked and I said, look, you could honestly give the second round is close, mm -hmm. the third round is close, and I can see how a judge could give it to either one in those. I thought the fourth was pretty evident. I thought the first was evident. I thought the fifth was evident. Mm. Yeah. Second and third were the ones that I would look at and say, you know, in all honesty, you go either way and neither guy can complain. No, I, I thought it was a fantastic fight, though. What, I, what you have to take away from fights like that is that you have two of the best fighters in the world in the Bantamweight division. Two of the best. Yeah. All-time best. Um, fantastic fighters. Henry being so damn good at wrestling and the ability to stuff takedowns and even get them when he needed and his ability to... He man, he's got a fucking beard on him. He took some. He took a couple of oh, big yeah. shots. Didn't even seem like it faced him. It's like oh, whatever. No. And he's a small guy. Like he's not a big guy. And so, well, he's not a tall guy, but he is. He's look, he's he's thick. Yeah. He's stout. Yep. He's you thick. Um, but I look. I looked at the way he fought, and then I thought Aljo. Like you said, his ability to hang and sag on people against the fence, and uh, he, it's a talent. Yeah. And then his reach and his range when he, I think in the third round with the fourth round, when the splits happened, when he hit him with boy, he, hit the, he was in the splits and, and Aljo was like, was able to lock all the way around, up around the ass. Was able to walk goes, around yep. I was like, yep. wow, that was pretty impressive, man. That's a lot of work right yep. there. And not, it's so hard and so difficult because I've been in those situations and it's, you're like, shit, if I keep working for this, I'm going to get more tired. And ah, fuck it, let's just go. <laughs> That's kind of, I mean, he was in deep, but when you have someone with the wrestling pedigree of Henry and the, um, you know, and able to do the splits practically, it's, 
starts taking it out of you if you're digging in there deep to try and get that takedown. So fantastic fight. Aljo moves on and he's going to fight Sean O'Malley, it looks like. And then uh, we'll see. But I, I look at Henry Cejudo and I go, you can't be done. I mean, three years off, no. three years off, split decision loss I, for the title. I saw him taking the gloves off, and I was like, don't do it. No, don't, don't do, do it, it Henry. You no. know, you got so many more things that are out there that you can. I, and I think he was eyeballing this and then eyeballing mm-hmm. that Volkanovsky or Yair Rodriguez, whoever wins it, you know, that matchup at 145. And it's like, hey, you got a, you got a ton that yeah. you can prove here in the next two years. Make as much don't, money as you can. Don't. Don't sit there and throw it away off of this one fight because it was close. Yeah, it, it was very close. It was very close. It was a very tactical fight on both sides. And uh, Alja came out on top, man. Tip, tip my hat to him. It's yep. very difficult to train for somebody who hasn't been active for three years. You don't know what they've gotten better at. You don't know how they're going to fight you. You don't know what, what uh, Henry Cejudo is going to be good at. Is he going to be more of a striker? Has he been working more on his wrestling? Has he developed a really good submission game? Like, those were all questions that needed to be answered when he walked yeah. in there the first two rounds going, shit, what do I, how do I deal with this guy? Because I haven't seen him in three years. How has he gotten better? He's worked with John Jones. He's worked with Wei Li Zhang. He's worked with all these top-level fighters. Devis, Devis and Figueredo. He's like, what have they? What has he pulled from them? And like, you know what? That works for me. Let me try that. You know, and uh, it just, it just uh, didn't, get, didn't get it done this time, but I think he still has so much left in the tank. 36. He's he has never taken a lot of damage, you know. I think the no. most damage he ever took was in the Marlon Rice fight. This fight, he didn't take any damage. He he got he got DJ hurt. He got, he, he got a little lumped up in that first in that first round against Marlon. DJ the first DJ the first fight he took shots. Yeah, to the body that's true. But it did. But you know those those go. Yeah, away. the body stuff. Yeah, we're talking about more head stuff. Is what I was talking about. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we see we got we've got Sean O'Malley next. It sounds like for Aljo, and then I think it'd be a fantastic idea to have Henry and Marab on the same fight. I, dude, Sean Shelby needs to listen to you. I believe that's a perfect. Yeah, and then you see, like if one of them falls off, you have Henry right there to snatch it up. Unless it's uh Marab, you know, like if if it's Sean O'Malley who falls off, you put Henry there for we we'll get a rematch. I'll watch that, and if it's the other way around, then you put Marab in there. Put Marab in yep. there. Which then that makes things complicated because it'll be for an interim title, and then you have right. to have Marab fight Sterling. You could have Marab with the interim title and Aljo with the mm. undisputed. Come they on, won't fight each other! How stupid! It's <laughs> <laughs> great. All right, uh, next fight. Ah, uh, we had Bilal Muhammad taking on Gilbert Burns, and Bilal Muhammad basically shut everybody up in that. Oh. He really can't fight on his feet. Yeah, he can. And he fought very well on his feet. And he had a lot of movement, switching stance continuously throughout the match. And how many takedowns did you see, Josh? Uh, none. Exactly. I said, I don't I don't think he's going to shoot a takedown. And it's because he believes in his stand-up now, yeah. and he's worked on it a lot. It's good. You know, he's effective. Gilbert did somehow, I think, on that, Take you down. know, However, that takedown or something, something happened to his uh, left shoulder and he wasn't able to really use his arm past that point. You could tell the frustration was there, but you know, no give up in him. You know, he's going to, I know he's upset about the loss and you know, this was important to him, Mm -hmm. but he's going to be back. But I, this is where we know we talked about those fights and being in camp continuously and what it can do to you. And, And this is what can happen is, yeah, you're you're thinking it's a it's a great idea, but sometimes you need that break, you need that rest, you need to have that just time to recoup and get yourself back. Mm-hmm. And he, I think that might have played a part in this uh, fight for him. You know what a fight camp is, right? Is you build your strength and your technique, and you're slimming down your body, but you're really taxing your body. Sure, and. You have little tiny so injuries. Like you're peaking. Yeah, you're peaking. You're peaking. But you're taxing your body in all areas. Your shoulders, your knees, your ankles, your neck. All of those things are being taxed. Your chin. They're all being taxed. And you can only tax them so many times before shit starts to give out. You know? I mean, you're taxing me basically until I'm broke. And so you, in these scenarios, your body needs that time to get the nutrition in. Because with him, he cuts weight. And most fi- all, almost all every fighter does. But with him, he cuts 
uh, it seems like a significant amount of weight. And so you're taxing, you're basically depleting the, the stuff that you would like to eat, you know, to put the muscle or to, to bulk up. They call it bulking season, you know, to put, to feed your body, feed your muscles, feed your body and your bones and all of those things. When you get into too many camps back to back, I really believe that we eat so clean during those times to try to make sure that everything's running <clears throat> perfectly that your body needs those two or three weeks afterwards to say, I just need to relax. I need to sleep. I need to rest. I need to get a lot more food intake, you know, and just yep. really, you know, still kind of train, still get after it a little bit, but I need to really spend time just letting my mind clear. Your mind controls your body, you know, and it's, you got, you've got to let that mind heal and take its time to really let your body heal and make convince your body that's it, that it's healed. I mean, we saw it. Remember we had a, we talked to Aaron Pico and after his last fight, he's like, man, that was like four days, four days after the fight. He's like, I'm still just laying in bed. I'm sleeping till like noon. He goes, I never sleep till noon. He's like, but for some reason, this fight just really taxed me. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to let your body rest. I mean, it's very unfortunate. The shoulder got hurt. I've been in that scenario and situation and he hurt it in the first round. I hurt my hand in the first part round. of the fight game. It's part of the game. And uh, the, the thing is, is you really let it get to you because there's so much at stake. Now, if it was like a fight where I had to get to, to work my way up in the rankings, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it would have bothered me as much when I fought Benson. But knowing that no matter what, I could never be denied a title shot had I beat Benson with the, the hand and the wrist and the thumb and everything like that with, with him, with Burns. I'm sure that was going through his mind. I literally fucked my shoulder up. And if I win this fight, I'm fighting next for the title. That, he, he, it's, it's going through his mind. He's like, all my fucking dreams are gone. That, that's exactly, you can't get that out of your mind. It's not as easy as like, oh, fucking power through. No, it's not. It's not as easy as that. And no, so it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. I feel bad for him because he's such a good guy. You saw the, the post in the, and stuff he did afterwards with Bilal and just talking about how, you know, it's, stop spreading hate on social media, be positive to people. And, you know, even in a loss and just he understands what how it happened. And he's a good guy, man. And, and more to Bilal. Good stuff on him. He did everything he was supposed to do. Go out there, establish the jab, establish the stand up, didn't shoot on the takedowns, you know, and uh, he, he did a good job coming on a short, off of a short camp. Good on him. And a, and a camp that he was, you know, in the middle of Ramadan, mm -hmm. on, that's not an easy nope. thing. No water, no food while you're training. I think I would adjust my training to midnight. Mm -hmm. Yep. As soon as the sun <laughs> goes down. Yep. Next fight. Yep. Ah, we had a really fantastic <laughs> performance Jeez. by Jonan Yan or Yan Jonan mm -hmm. against Jessica Andras. Man, I'll tell you what, she came out and she was a sniper. She was just all over Andrade and waiting for Andrade to open up. When she did, she hit her with straight shots. The kicks were hard. They were clean. She was controlling the range. She made Andrade get a little bit, as we would say, wild, yep. a little frustrated. And when she opened up with that, those wide looping shots, beautiful counter right hand right on the button. Put her down, finished her off. Yeah, super impressed with Jan. I mean, I've watched her multiple times. I watched her beat like uh, Mackenzie Dern and stuff, and I was always in that. Yeah, she's good, but she's right. I don't think she's one of those mm -hmm. in the top. Nope, she proved me wrong. She's she's definitely up there. All right, so if you guys have been listening to this show for a while, okay, I'm gonna say something to you guys, okay? So just listen closely, because uh, if I if I if if it's ever brought to my attention, I'm gonna deny it all the way to the grave. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. She, yeah. Jan did what I thought that Jessica Andrade was going to do to her. I thought she was going to bully her around. I thought she was going to land the big shots. She was going to put fear into her. And I thought Jessica Andrade would be the one that slept her. And Jan used her footwork to use the circle off, to circle backwards, make the, and create the space, and hit her with the shot. Beautifully she done. She never went straight back. No, she, she didn't. She, she created an angle. As she yep. as she circled out and she created the angle and boom ran right had her run right into that shot beautifully done, I think she had obviously had done a lot enough research on Andrade to understand that like if you touch her touch her touch her, 
Whether it's light jabs, you don't have to hit her hard. She'll eventually get frustrated and she'll bull rush you. And what I do, I need, to, I need to not move straight back. I need to circle out right into my power hand. Boom. Get her to chase. And she opened up sw and swung widely and landed the beautiful shot. Man, I, I, was, I, I was at the airport and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, no way. I was like, man, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, from, from the start from the start yeah. on that one i was like wow she is just eating her up yeah it was a, it, you know, is she gonna be able to maintain it great performance definitely it definitely was great performance dave pull up pull up the rankings for that division though the strawweight division i mean realistically who's ahead of yawn now i mean like there's only a couple of them well you got rose nama is still up there yeah I think Carla is still out there, but Carla's out. Well, Jessica is in there, right? Jessica Andrade, so she's going to move up there. So her and Lemos are her. Well, both Marina Rodriguez lost yeah. and Jessica lost. So, yeah. She's she move died, up a right? lot. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'll get it back she's in gonna, a second. For she's, you guys. she's definitely going to move up quite a bit. Yeah. I, so she'll, she'll be right under, you know, it's like the whole thing with uh, Car you know, Carla's going to be out. For, yeah. At least nine months. She's having a baby. At least nine that's months. Great. So, yeah. <laughs> She'll be out for at least nine months. <laughs> yeah, at least nine months. It's uh. She'll be out for over a year. I think it's Lemos, uh, Rose Namajunas. Coming right up. there, yeah. So there's not. I think after yeah. she beat on she beat Andrade, so now she'll be in that number four spot. So you've got Lemos yeah, and Andrade. I think that are ahead of her, and so that'll be uh that'll be somewhere to one of those two. I think her and Rose would be a fun fight because they're both they're both on the feet. Both technicians. Yeah. Yep. Huh? And bro, where's yeah, Rose right. been? You know, Rose, 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 she, Rose. She, she just she marches to her own beat. I love it, and she's gonna do what she wants to do, and, and that's I'm all for. She's it. a gem. She's a gem. Yeah, I she's like awesome. it. Sweetheart. Well, I wish I knew what was next because Dave's uh, screen popped off. Yeah, we had Moza. Uh, we had Evlov uh -huh. against Diego. Lopez. That was Lopes. Lopes. They called it Lopes, so I was going to go with Lopes. But Diego Lopes, I mean, that kid came out fighting. <sighs> that kid, that kid came out putting it on. Evelov at times that you know there was some good submission attempts in there. That arm bar was yes. freaking tight. The freaking knee bar was freaking tight. He did all kinds of work in trying to get to Evelov. I mean. You can't ask for a better performance from a guy last minute, just coming in. What a what a freaking stud he proved to be. Yeah, he he just seemed like he didn't care. He came out and was no, like, "He did it." Well, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're ranked. I don't give a crap. I don't I don't care about anything you've done before in the past. I'm gonna do me. And he came out throwing big heavy shots. And then he got taken down, and he threw up submission after submission after submission. I was like, holy shit. I looked away for a second. Next thing you know, he's got fucking Evolov just stretched out with an arm. Evolov got lucky. He was able to get his knee in there behind the butt. You know, he leaned yep. into it a little bit, got the knee behind the butt, was able to kind of yank out a little bit, get back on top. I was pretty damn. I was very impressed. Very impressed with Lopes. He Multiple things. Fantastic. I mean, he even locked in a triangle choke, yep. but it was, you know, end of the round, but just was going after Evlov was no respect for you know who he was his record all the things that you were looking at he was he was out there to win the fight and you know, I know that they rewarded him with fifty thousand dollars supposedly after that good for them they should have because that guy came out fought his ass off and really I mean put on a performance yeah. fantastic you know, and, and and we're not even talking about the guy in Evlov who who won the fight yeah you know? Yeah, let me ask you this though, John. I mean, the submissions yeah. were so damn close, and Evelov oh, didn't do a lot of damage. He didn't do much with he his. He did some. He, he did some damage with the strike. You think enough though to win? Oh, I, considering like how close those submissions were. Yeah, I mean, they were tight. That's. I mean, I I would almost equate that to being as close to dropping you or wobbling close. you a little bit. I mean, if I'm gonna have to yeah. say like, hey, I rocked you, and I basically had your arm stretched out for a good eight seconds or seven seconds or whatever it was that's that was almost finishing the fight no different than me like getting you to stumble and doing the stanky leg they're very close yep. very that close is. um is. i mean so you would you would say what, what, Evlov did enough well, I, damage I, I, to to warrant not to winning those rounds one of the judges had him 30 27 Jeez. i was like interesting jesus man you're you're harsh because i thought lopes came in there and i thought there was a couple of rounds that you could definitely say Based upon his submissions, 
attempt, the attempts with the submission hmm. definitely deserve the round. Hmm. So, yeah, I agree with you. Charles Jordan and um, Cron Gracie. Cron Gracie, that's one we're going to have to talk about for a little bit here. You know, I, going into this after, again, basically a four-year layoff, for Chrome, close to four years, I was like 34 years of age now. So, man, but I was really concerned about who he was training with because he wasn't training with the people he was, you know, in uh, earlier parts of his career. The four year layoff, he had moved to Montana. You know, really, why is he coming back? And when you take a look, and you and I have both talked about Charles Jordan. Mm -hmm. and, I, you know, he's a phenomenal fighter. You know, he's good in the stand up. He's got a very good ground game. He attacks, really enjoy watching him. So I, I looked at it and said, look, if Crone gets to the top position, he's going to submit him. You know, if he gets to his back, there's a chance, you know, there's a chance, but Jordan is a, is a black belt. He understands, you know, what he needs to do to, you know, slow things down keep the, you know keep himself tight but it wasn't even i mean this was so stark in the what people are looking at and i thought i think dean thomas actually said it is look you're looking at a generational gap here you're looking at a one-dimensional fighter in crone who is a good jujitsu stylist a great jujitsu stylist i'll say but you're lacking two areas that are super important when it comes to being a complete mixed martial artist. Your wrestling is non-existent. It's just not, yeah. not there. And you're striking for the most part. Not that you couldn't do it. You weren't doing it. You were not throwing your hands. You were bull rushing in, you know, showing you you're tough. You got it. You got a chin, but he, he, basically you were target practice. Yeah for Charles Jordan in the stand-up. And then when you did decide to try to pull guard, Josh, look, nothing yeah. as far as, you know, it, nothing as far as even a close attempt at a good sweep. No no, no switching to an Uma Plata or the things that you can do when a guy is trying to stay tight. Just more of, let me just stay here. It just was not a good performance. And, and if Crone is going to be in this, I, I don't want to see him fight, mm -mm. being that he's so one-dimensional from what he's facing for his opponents. I have no desire to see him fight again. Yeah. And the, what the crazy part is that I really enjoy watching him grapple. He's fantastic. Oh, yeah. But he yeah. has <clears throat> he's just proved that. And he's an attacker. Yep. And that's what I'm saying. Like that, but he's just proved that sports jujitsu is can't is not effective in MMA. The no. levels have changed. Um, the sport has grown. It's just beyond one dimensional fighters. He's a he's a judo black belt. You would have never have guessed. Every time he got to the clinch, he didn't know what to do. Would have never have thought. Never. And so um his wrestling, like you said, is non existent. There's no there's no single legs, there's no double legs. He, he doesn't know what to do in the clinch either. Um I expected him to either like work out more, work more on his wrestling on the four years off or have better striking on the four years off. I think yeah. he's worse now than he was before. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I think what I looked at that fight and you know, you can go back and watch his Cub Swanson fight. He was at least throwing and landing shots mm -hmm. on Cub. Now Cub was throwing and landing shots on him, but he was throwing and he was going after him. He did. He, I don't, I don't know what the numbers were. But he did not throw his hands. If he threw 30 punches, I'm shocked. In the whole fight. In the whole yeah. fight. Yep. I agree. I would be surprised if he threw more than 20, 20 or 30. I'd be surprised. In the stand-up? No, no, I'm just saying period in the, in the fight. I mean, yeah, well, when he went to his back, there was a couple in there. Yeah. But, I mean, nothing. I, I don't know. I don't know what you do with them. If you're the UFC, you probably release them. I can't imagine. Honestly. I can't imagine he's fighting for cheap. No, he's a, his last name's Gracie, and I I just he's making he's making good money. We understand after all the years of working in the sport, that family doesn't come. They don't come into the the cage unless they're getting paid, P pretty decent. 
So I can't, I, I just, I don't think they're going to keep him. I wouldn't imagine they would. Maybe one more effort, but I mean, they'd have to, they'll probably want to turn him over fast to see, just cut bait and cut bait here pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I really enjoy watching him grapple. He is phenomenal. Oh, He's so he's slick, unbelievable. so smooth. But we, we, there's an old saying, like there is that, hey, speed kills. There's an old saying also that black belts become white belts as soon as they start getting hit. Yeah, but it, it, there was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost to the point I'm tired of that whole, oh, a black belt becomes a brown belt and then a purple mm-hmm. belt. Anybody that's getting hit and damaged is being diminished as a fighter. And so, yes, I, I agree with that. The skill level starts to, you know, dissipate. Mm-hmm. But you have to come in with a skill set <clears throat> that is, you know, conceptually effective for 2023 in the world of MMA. And Crone is not coming in with that skill set. Well, I think that, that saying, though, John, it doesn't mean like if you're getting hit that it, the punches, as soon as I start loading up, a, a sports jiu-jitsu person just doesn't attempt their submissions. The, oh, the difference between an MMA jiu-jitsu person is if they see the punch coming, coming, they still try to mount that attack. I'll take the shot to try and hit the submission or try to hit the sweep. I mean, I've been saying this for the longest time, this sweep, submit, get up, submit, sweep, get up. You, you really, that's got to be your motto when you're on the bottom. You've Absolutely. really got to make this effort to hit the submission. If you don't get it, sweep them. If you don't get it, it, kick them off and get back get to your feet. It's got to be a constant effort, constant that, effort. That that basic premise and those <clears throat> elements of, you know, whether it's going to be submit, sweep, stand, whatever you're going to say, that's been there for a while, yeah. Josh. You know, that's not that's not that's not a new concept in our sport. That's an old concept, and you you just take a look. You, we're going to talk about you know Mikey Musumeci, who mm-hmm. was in the a uh, submission grappling mm-hmm. for one. And you take a look at his grappling. It's phenomenal. It's amazing to watch. But you also look and go, son, don't ever do MMA. Mm. Because you're going to get killed oh, yeah. if you do MMA. You're a, you are a remarkable grappler. Stick with it. Don't, don't switch. Mm. And, and you're going to see that. You know, MMA is a, it's a different beast. And it's like, how many times have we said all these Boxing is completely different than MMA. MMA is completely different than bare knuckle boxing. You know, all of it is different than just grappling. You know, this is why I say grappling is not a fight. Mm-hmm. It's a match. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear, I hear guys all the time. Oh, I got a fight. No, that's Jiu-jitsu not a fight, guys. dude. I'm sorry. Jiu-jitsu guys. <laughs> it's, it's not a fight. It's not. You know, it's a match. Nope. It's like wrestling. Mm-hmm. But next uh, uh, next do you guys have it back yeah yeah we yeah, got it we back got it. all right all right we had the uh preliminary uh headliner was drew dober against matt frivola boy that was a that was a barn burner for a while there and uh drew dober was doing so well and he he had this is where you just take a look at a fight and you go matt frivola was in trouble he couldn't figure out the range. He couldn't figure out wh- how to get towards Drew Dober without getting hit. Drew Dober was all over him, and one shot changed yeah. everything. And that's you know that's fighting, and that's congratulations to Matt Frivola. You know, you stuck in there, you you hung in there with taking big shots, and you were you were getting damaged, and you were trying to figure out a way, and you figured it out, and you landed that one shot. And I know Dober was upset with the with the stoppage and stuff, but he definitely got hurt, and uh, it was a good stoppage by Herb, you know. But what, I, I watched it? Drew Dober fight. Yeah, he got he got he got stung. Oof. Sometimes the timing of things is not perfect. Gotcha, gotcha. I I, I don't I don't I don't know if I want to say it was a, a good stoppage. Okay, I don't know if I want to say that. <clears throat> um. <laughs> I go. I go back to the Jessica Andrade fight, though. Too was that a good stoppage? Did she, did she get put down and no one was home when she got hit? Yeah, and then she got woken back up, and the referee's mm-hmm. coming in to stop it because he sees something. Got so it. 
sometimes timing doesn't make things look good. Very true. This is very true. Um, I looked at the Andrade fight, but you have a former champion and then Jan. Uh, you know, I looked at, you got to give, this is basically like, hey, who's going to be fighting kind of like for the number one spot after the, whoever wins this, this. This is for a contender for the title. Yeah, you've got, you've got to let that fight play itself out. That's the way I looked okay. at it. Now with the Dober fight, I'm okay. With the Dober fight, I thought it was a little bit of an early stoppage, also because Dober has been known to take shots, do whatever, and still be able to come back and dish it all out, you know. Um, but I'm not mad at the stoppage, though. You know, it is what it is. Uh, Frivola, I think, came out real strong with the heavy kicks. Oh yeah, yeah he was like, wow, wow. I was like, oh, those sound horrible. And I think Dober it caught Dober off guard on how I think how heavy his kicks were and how strong he was. <clears throat> he's like you could see the way he was kind of ooh, like kind of moving his body kind of taking him and going okay i can't take many of those and then he started finding his rhythm fi- started finding his range and he started touching him up but uh man this this fight had me on the edge of my seat from the moment it started oh, <laughs> i was good. like holy shit i could see why they made you guys the main event of the prelims <laughs> it was yep. it was uh it was a great fight man but it Unfortunately, in both these type for both these guys, one of, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. But uh, absolutely great fight. Next fight, we had Kennedy and Joku against Devin Clark. And you take a look at it. <clears throat> Kennedy multiple times, you know, in fights that he's had, gets hurt, and then almost gets taken out of the fight and comes back. And Devin Clark, you know, he went after him, man. He went after him with everything he had, and then. The uh, I, I, I do not know how they come up with a guillotine choke on this choke, Josh. This is not a guillotine choke. You see someone with a front choke, it's a front choke. Okay, done the same as a rear naked choke, mm-hmm. not a guillotine choke. So where the hell are they coming up with a, ooh, hold it, what did a, a power guillotine mm-hmm. was, was Rogan's. Was it? That's not a power guillotine, it's a front choke. But okay. Yeah, I, I I thought I thought it was a good performance. Does uh, Kennedy in Choku? Does he remind you of John Jones a little bit? Maybe it's the body <sighs> style. Maybe it's the way he wears his shorts he's with the long very, slit. Very, he's very tall. He doesn't have the wrestling of Jones. No, no, he doesn't. No. <clears throat> um, but he, he just kind of I think kind of the way he walks too a little bit. Whatever it is, yeah, and the way he wears a, his he's shorts. He's a classy kid. Yes. I, I really enjoy him. Yeah, you know, and I feel really bad. I know that he had his his mom had passed and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, had you know. ALS and stuff, and that was a hard thing for him. So he, uh, you know, said the thing about you know that fight was for his mom and stuff, and that's good great. But he, he's good. Yes, he he's good. He is, and he's tough because man, he is. He fights. I've watched him multiple times fight his way from getting cracked, and all of a sudden those big long legs start to wobble a little bit. He fights his way out of it. So very nicely done. Yeah, you know what it is, right? It's almost as if he needs to wake up. Because yeah. he kind of fights at a, like kind of a lackluster pace until you start hitting yep. him, and then he's like, "Oh shit, I'm really in a fight. I better get on this." And then he just starts kneeing you and fucking you up. You know, yep. he's got good knees from the clinch. He does good elbows and does good work from that clinch position. I mean, if I'm him, I'm just grabbing you right away and just beating the shit out of you that way. If I was blessed like that, <laughs> he's... and you, and you would think that sometimes guys, everyone has a preference. Mm-hmm. And overhooks, underhooks, those types of things in, in different situations. But anytime your back is on that cage and you're overhooking, mm-hmm. you're you're at a disadvantage when it comes to knees coming up inside. You've got to sit there and go, I've got to either turn my body or get pummel in and let me get this underhook so I can make it to where that's not something that can be used against me. And Devin Devin didn't do that. And he he ate a couple of those big ones. Uh next. <clears throat> We had Chaos Williams going against a kid. I'll tell you what, man. This kid can fight. Bedoya, Rolando Bedoya came out. And he really put on a good performance. You know, Chaos Williams got a lot of power. He comes uh, with a lot of uh, aggression. And I think that aggression got him the win. But Bedoya was right there with him throughout. Very close fight. You know, who impressed me was the, what's her name, Verna. The way she was able to get the takedowns, the way she was able, I knew, I knew she was better than Marina on the ground, but the way yeah. she made the takedowns look easy, it shocked me. 
Because I had oh. seen some of her past fights. She's had decent takedowns, but they're not like like they were in this fight. No. She lifted lifted nope. the legs, flared it. Like she'd been working on her wrestling, and her control. I mean, she's she's an animal. Like people are gonna have, she's gonna have hard people are gonna have a hard time with her. She's kind of one dimensional, but she's not afraid to throw. She's, no, and she's got a she's she, got a she's chin not, on her. She, I don't I don't think she's one dimensional. I think she just has a superiority when it comes to the ground, oh, yeah. and she she relies upon yeah. it. But her wrestling is not bad, and she'll throw her hands. You know, so she's good. Did she? She fought uh, Mackenzie Dern, correct? Yes. Ah, yeah. Mackenzie got the win. Yeah, she got the win on it. Because I was like, man, I, I'm trying to remember how that fight played out, but I remember Mackenzie was more on the feet, try to stuff the takedowns, keep it on the feet. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yep. Uh next, Parker Porter versus Braxton Smith. Look, these guys were big slinging. boys throwing, <laughs> slinging big shot. You, hey. You go in there and you open up and you 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 have the possibility of putting somebody out and you have the possibility of being put out. And right. Braxton Smith, it just was your number, wow. man. You were gonna be put out. Nice job by Parker Porter. Uh Ikram uh I don't know how to oh, his man. last name, but man, he's got power. Aliskarov. Aliskarov. Aliskarov against Phil Hawes. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Phil Hawes is looking good, John. And yeah, he was for peak. certain till a certain moment. About two minutes and fifty yeah. seconds worth, <laughs> well, <laughs> something like that. That's what power will do. Jeez. You know, Phil. Phil's been known to be good wrestling, good athlete. The chin is getting a little bit dented. Mm. Let's just be honest. He's taken some big knockouts. You know, do me a favor, Dave. Pull up Phil Haas, and this is what I talk about. You start getting uh, that it says KO oh. next to your name. You know, more than three times. Take a look at the last two uh, two losses right there. WC, both. Man. Okay. Take a look at Chris Curtis. KO. All right. So, so oh, four head kick. Four, oh yeah. This is what I'm. This is what I'm talking about. You know, it starts to affect who you are and your ability to perform as a fighter, based upon you can't get touched the same way and, and survive. And so I thought Phil was fighting, you know, he was looking, he was looking good. Mm. He was moving well. He just took a big shot. It's just the inability to have that kind of shot and survive it. Oof. Next fight. Is there any, is it, I didn't even know there was another fight. I didn't see this one. Yeah, there was. Claudio Hiberio just basically, eh, I don't want to say walk through ugly man, Joe Holmes, but Put on a very nice performance. Really dominated the, the positioning of the fight. Got the TKO. Nice job. All right. Well, hey, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that conversation. Go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and subscribe to us over there. It is free. We take our fan questions from there. And uh, we'll be doing a fan Q&A next week uh, when, when we return from Paris. And uh, with all the fight breakdowns, so we'll be doing one of those. So make sure you guys submit your questions over there. We only take the fan questions from OnlyFans.com slash Wayne. Head over there and subscribe. Also, before we move on to the one championship talk and conversation of Demetrius Johnson and Adriano Marais, um, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button and hit that little thumbs up. and Hit the notifications for when we drop extra content for you guys. All right, let's get into one championship. Let's take a look at it. You want to start from the top? You want to go from the bottom? What do you want start to do? Start from the top. Well, then let's talk about Demetrius Johnson against Adriano Marais. I thought Adriano Marais really fought a, a as good a fight as he was going to be able to fight against Demetrius in this. I thought that he was trying to be aggressive in the beginning, going after DJ. DJ had basically the same game plan as he had in his second fight. It was put pressure on him, make him tired. I I'll give it to Adriano. He didn't break down. It's, it looked like he was starting to break down in the fight, and then he kind of got it back. But as the fight went on, Demetrius started taking over in this fight, and he just kept taking more and more, and being the more of the landing the better shots, the 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 knees to the inside and the body. The short elbows, all those things just added up over time. Yeah, it, it definitely did. I think uh but we've talked about DJ. DJ's got one of the highest Slip. flight IQs in the game. And he understands when you're fighting someone who's bigger than you, 
You've got to try to bigger wear them stronger. down. Yeah, bigger and stronger. You've got to try to wear them down. Definitely was. Now, Marais also said, and he's like, look, I didn't believe that in my in my last fight. I didn't believe I once I got outside the second round. He's like, I just didn't have the cardio for it. Well, if you didn't have the cardio for it back then, and you fought him twice, makes me wonder, like, your heart is a muscle. You've got to build that up to be able to pump out all that oxygen and that blood, you know, like to to, to create... The amount of oxygen in your muscles that you need to go for five rounds. You need to work that. That just shocks me that he, the expectation of like, oh, you know, like I'm going to get him out of there. You're talking about Demetrius Johnson. You're not just getting him out of there. <laughs> it's, like, it was, it's one of those. How many times do we say it's hard to get a good fighter out? Yeah, it's hard to get him, you know, in that position where you get him out. You know, this is where people, are, oh, don't leave it in the hands of judges. Really, yeah. fight someone that's really good. Not an easy thing to to just, you know, put them away. Yep. And so you look and you go in this type of situation. You're always looking. I'm going to go five rounds. You're lucky if you don't. Yeah, I just look at uh, Marais. He just it felt like he didn't he didn't believe in himself as the fight went on. He started he was just not believing in himself even more. He believed. That I can't, I think he thought, okay, if I can get him out of there in the first round, if I can get him out of there in the well, second you, round, and you could see in the first round yeah. he was really going after him, and and DJ was, he was just maintaining, and being smart. He wasn't trying to win the first round. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't need to win this. I need to win the fight. Yeah. So, showed a lot of maturity and showed why he's so good. I mean, where does he go from here, John? You know, truthfully, they don't have anyone to fight him. And you take a look at it, and again, you know, I hate to say it, the guy, you know, if you go down, I'll, I'll get his name if you go down to the bottom, but, you know, the guy who came in the, to the cage and they did the face-off. Once again, Demetrius looks like he's a little kid looking up at somebody. <laughs> you know, and it's like, uh, okay, how many times does he have to fight somebody yeah. that is not really within his weight class? You know, it just is, it's ridiculous. It really is. And it, it's, a, it's a, look, he, he's over there and, you know, he's doing good things for them. He was very complimentary and trying to push one and everything and doing his job. But the weight class and the way they do it, they don't benefit him no. at all. I just, I'm saying it shocks me that they don't have more, like they don't have more better guys in the lighter weights. Because yeah. they do have a lot of great talent there. I just it's gonna be hard to find someone to match his talent. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean here I mean I I'd like to see him maybe do some grappling matches. I mean look, give give me something else. Give me give, No. Give, no. Give, oh, no. John. No. No. Yeah. Him no, and him and Mikey would be a good match. Really, would it? Yeah. Let's Would it be a good MMA fight? No. And it wouldn't be a good grappling match. You don't either. know that. <laughs> It would be it would be difficult for Mikey to get Demetrius down. Maybe we do one and one, one <laughs> one round of grappling, one round of MMA. Oh, you look at you, K, 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 K one, K one stuff. Ah, uh, next fight. Oh, yeah, Nong Stamp Stamp Fair Texas. She's known against Elise Anderson. That was wow. okay. That was MMA wise. But there was also the Muay Thai fight with uh, Rod Tang, mm -hmm. Rod Tang, who was uh, in there and it's not on our thing. So I don't want to skip that because mm -hmm. Rod Tang just, He's that just dude's nasty. a stud. He's fun to watch. He's nasty. He, fu he, he fought DJ. Nasty he fought DJ. Yeah. 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 DJ tells a story about how he's like, I cracked him. He's like, I've never had someone look at me and go. All right, dude. What? He's like, I yeah. was, I was scared for my life after that. <laughs> it's like this guy. He's like, yeah. it, it didn't affect. I hit him, him with all. everything I had, and he just went. Come no, on. he he goes, he goes. He actually looked at me like as if I didn't. He didn't give a shit. He's like, yeah, whatever. Like it just was like. Yeah. Well, that, that's the way he fights. It's, it's he's awesome, man. He's yeah, he is. He's awesome. definitely a great talent to have on their roster. He's fantastic. Yes. Yep. So. We didn't get to talk about that one, but Nong Stamp against Elise Anderson. What a beautiful kick to the body. What a beautiful setup. She attacked the body multiple times throughout that fight. And then the, the kick to the body. Hey, it shuts you down. I don't, I, I, I don't, don't, uh, 
in any way want to say anything bad about young Miss Anderson because I understand that that can definitely just take everything away from you. You can't you can't stand up. You can't do anything. Great great job by Stamps. You know she really proved herself again for one. Yeah, I want to I want to give this a, take this time to make it as like a learning point. Nong Stamp versus Anderson, a little bit out of like young fighters pay attention to how she came out of this exchange she came out throwing something if you go back to fabian edwards versus leota machida and bellator i'm just using what's off the top of my head guys and and fabian had been knocked before from like okay we break i come back to the center and okay we go ahead and we start fighting again like a sparring session in that fight he realized that he couldn't do that he had to kind of fight off of the exchanges this was a classic example they got into a little tussle they broke off of it and boom anderson thought that leave them something on the exit yep every single time anderson thought that she was just going to circle back out okay we'll get back to fighting again no you've got to make them pay you've got to make them think about okay when i'm coming out of the exchange they're going to get hit with something yep. you've got to try to steal that last little exchange for the judges also I felt like that would have that might have been some stuff too, like Henry could have used, and I think that just yeah, that yeah. has time away. Absolutely. I believe for Henry it was more time away. In this scenario and situation, it was it was just perfect timing, great game plan. Don't let her rest as you're breaking out. You know, give her something to think about as as she's uh, circling out or away from you or off the break. Great job by her, perfectly timed. You know, she thought she was going to go to the head. She went to the body. Bam! And you could see Anderson lift her hand up like this to block the head. And it went right to the body. Nicely timed. Yep. Beautifully done. Sebastian Catastam, who I've enjoyed watching before. This guy just comes forward and just tries to fight. Going up against Roberto Soldic. And I try, I, I blew up Soldic t- telling everyone, look, the guy's a monster. He's a beast. He's great, fun to watch. And he is. Mm-hmm. And he was doing well in that fight. He was landing that straight left hand that he always you know, goes after he had Catastam in trouble in the first round. Catastam came out and said, you know what? I just got to set my feet and I got it. I got to bite down and we're going to see who's going to go. And he hurt Soldic and went after him and finished him off. What a beautiful win that was proving exactly why he is so tough and uh, just a, a good talent, man. That was a great fight. Loved it. Fantastic fight. But the fight that I want to talk about is Sage Northcutt. John, he looks like a physically looks like a completely different person. Almost like he's a man now. He's twenty seven years old. Well, the, that is the difference. That is, Josh. He is his facial features look different. I don't know if it's because he got restructured after his face got no. broke, but he looks like a, he has matured a as a man now. He's not yes. a baby face. He also fi- his figure. He has narrowed his waist down. He's really leaned out. He's his waist was narrow before, dude. Well, he got a little, he he is, got a little thick there for a bit, like kind of muscular wise. Put together, yeah. look, I've been around him a lot, and that kid is—I can't say that—that that young man is put together like a fucking brick shit house, dude. He is, he is a fucking anatomy mm. chart. It's amazing to look at him. It's like Jesus. Do you ever eat anything bad? Calm down, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man oh you're giving off different vibes right now <laughs> uh, all- i'm not giving off those vibes <laughs> he's uh it's just he's he's built he's built like i mean i, I always compare him to, like to a bodybuilder he's physically built like a bodybuilder but yep. he's got the conditioning the cardio to go along with it you can tell yeah. he's someone that takes care of his well, body and before when like when he was in the ufc you know i get it I, I've had lunch with him and his dad and we, you know, we've talked about stuff and I, I told him back then, I said, Son, you need to get with people that are going to teach you better wrestling, people that are going to teach you the ground in a better way. You're lacking there. And if you can't take shots from someone in the stand up and go, you're going to end up not having anywhere else to go. You got to have the thing. And the time away, he obviously, look, he, this, this is the thing I'll say about his submission. It wasn't so much he he got put down with the jab mm-hmm. and stuff, but I don't think he was that hurt by it. I think he was more surprised by it. But it was take a look at when he throws the submission on, and take a look at the readjustment with his legs mm-hmm. when he goes after putting pressure on it. That told me, okay, you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That wasn't just that wasn't just a oh, 
you know, here, I'm going to try to grab something and I've done this a couple of times. No, you have practiced that time and time again and you understand where you need to adjust when that guy's trying to do something to adjust to roll through it. He did a great job and he got the uh, you know, really nice submission, big win coming back. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought when we, when people, when fighters leave and you're gone for that amount of time, especially after having your face. Broken. Yep. Are you going to be gun shy? Are you going to be hesitant to yep. get hit there? Um, not just that, but then on top of it, like what, have, what have you gotten better at? And it was very evident right off the bat. He got better at his jiu-jitsu, you know, oh, yeah. his transitions, all of those things. He's gotten better. He's an athlete. There's no way. You can't look like oh. that. Like, well, yeah, you can't look like that and not be an athlete. Never mind. Take that back. Um, but You can't move like he yeah. does and not be an athlete. He came out. He's fast. He is just an athlete. He came out throwing nice head kicks, came out throwing nice movement, like on his feet. And then he, you know, he obviously stepped in a little bit and stepped right into a jab, got his butt, sat to his butt. But then he made a nice little exchange, get, got to the submission, and beautifully executed. Nicely done. Four years away. Yep. Nice win. Nice recovery. Good good job. Next fight. Oh, Ang Long Song, who we both know very well and enjoy watching him fight, going against uh, Rong Fan or Fan Rong. Mm-hmm. It's always crazy which way it goes, but. Uh, it, this was a this is a battle in the beginning. Mm-hmm. First round, they were they were cracking. There was a lot of big shots going on. Ong Long Song is a guy that you know he he will stand there and throw. What was that? But thunder. that was called thunder. Is it you or was that Dave? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah, it, j- it just shook the whole building. Holy yeah. shit! Correct. What? Love that. Wow. But notice, I didn't say anything. No, I had to because I was, I was <laughs> man. That's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in, I was in Dallas morning. last week. I was in Dallas on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And Thursday night, I went out to dinner with Bobby Lashley and uh, Rich Chow. We had some dinner out, and we were sitting outside. Was, How's Bobby doing? He's doing great. He's doing yeah, he's great, man. Uh, he's such a. Good he's guy. living out there in that Frisco area there, and he loves it out there. He loves, he loves it. He's just like people are nice and the. Uh, Community sense of community is nice, you know, and uh, his kids are doing well in in sports, athletics, all those things, and he just loves it. He loves being out there. He loves it. I think he's going to end up being there for a long, long time. It's what I'm gathering. So, WWE is going well for him, and he continues to enjoy it. And um, you know, he every time it's funny. Every time I see him, he's like, "Yeah, you know, I'm doing well. You know, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do it." I said, "Bobby, you realize, right? You told me that 12 years ago." <laughs> <laughs> you said, ah, you know, I'm not going to do it long. I said, but yet, here you are. He's like, yep. So, but uh, no, he's doing good. That son of a bitch. He's got like the perfect smile. Doesn't look like anything oh. is wrong with his face. Dude, he looks, what are you talking about? He, he looks like he's fucking like 28, 28 year old. I don't know. He doesn't have a wrinkle no. on him. No. Anywhere. I don't right. know. It's like, hey, some of us no. are not like that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really jealous, to be honest. I'm really yeah. jealous because I was always way better looking than him. But then now, I mean, like, hey, yeah. it's not it's not happening anymore, John. It's not happening anymore. When I I've, I've met him when he was wrestling at Missouri Valley with Trevor Prangley, uh, right after they were wrestling there, and I met him at uh, the Zinkins house down in uh, Fresno. And um, man, he was always the nicest guy, super respectful, yeah. always, always just great conversation, just great to talk to, great to sit down and just chat with man, catching up and. He's doing some good things, man. He's got he's got a, a bunch of little businesses going on on the outside, and he's doing fantastic stuff. So, looking forward to uh, you know getting potentially working with him on a couple ideas that we were talking about. So we'll see what happens. Um, the uh, the fan fight versus uh, song. Uh, yeah, he just he's Ong Long Song is so good. He's just he had a little downturn for a little bit. I think I think a little bit of it was just uh a little bit too much going on you know outside activities going on everything kind of you know and then bringing it into the cage you know the gym stuff remember they were bouncing the that hard hard knocks was kind of bouncing from location or gym to gym from black zillions to hard knocks to sanford you know to kill club yep you know and he's getting a little bit older in age but uh but he's still fantastic he's a great fighter i mean for a while there he was the light heavyweight champion and the heavyweight champion i believe he was both 
And uh, he's no, he was the middleweight the middle and the light heavy. Okay, he never. So I know he had two titles at one time for a while, but yeah. he was a fantastic, fantastic. And when you talk to him, yeah. he's so damn nice. What yeah, a great guy! A, what a great guy! Yeah. Uh, any other fights out here you want to talk about? Uh, no. Nah. All right, well, hey, that's going to wrap up our 1FC talk. And, uh, hey, they're showing Denver. John, that's got to be hard for fighters, though. Coming over, you're fighting at altitude. Yes, it is. I mean, but they put on great performances. I thought they put on great performances. And, uh, you know, some of them didn't go, obviously, the full distance. But still, good job, man. Great job by the fighters and the athletes to go out there and put it on the line. And Denver's not easy. It's not easy. No, it is not. Nope. So not an easy place. That's gonna wrap up our one FC talk and uh congratulations to them having their first show in the United States. And uh if you guys didn't get a chance to watch it, check it out on Amazon Prime. It's still up. Uh I watched it a little bit this morning, some of the fights. I, I wanted to walk go back through and watch Ty Rosolo. So I'm going back through and watch that. And uh Okay, watch. let's talk about Ty yes. going against DeRitter in a grappling match. Mm-hmm. I talk we kind of let's talk about the two grappling matches. And this is where um God dang it. Who did they have come in to commentate? It was uh, Tom. Tom DeFries came in to, to commentate for the grappling things. And, and all of a sudden, you know, they're saying that the DeRitter versus uh, Ty Rotolo fight. Yeah. yeah. The Ty Rotolo fight. You know, one of the best grappling matches ever. What? Stop. <laughs> Stop. Okay. <sighs> Stop with the theatrics. Stop with the bullshit. It was horrible. Okay, because DeRitter was being defensive the entire fucking time, trying to figure out a way to, you know, oh, get on top, you know, if he could, or get something standing, or t- or tire the smaller guy out, you know. Okay, but don't sit there and tell me it was a if, oh, one of the best grappling matches I've ever seen. Well, then you haven't seen shit for grappling oh, matches. John. Okay, no, fucking don't lie. You take it personal. Okay, <laughs> no. All right, then let's take a look at the Mikey. Musmechi Mush- fight. <laughs> <Mush-Mechi>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say his last name either. Musmechi. Yeah. But it was fantastic. Yeah. He was all over. He was going after so many submissions. That was a great grab. But his match, opponent was very defensive, way. John. So it was one sided, yeah. though. Yes, he was because he was had someone that was all over him. But hey, at least I had someone that was all over throwing all mm-hmm. kinds of submissions. Are you kidding? Shaolin got tired of saying catch. Okay. <laughs> this is true. This it was is true. But, you know, both of those, you take a look at them and you go, you know, I, I was expecting, you know, the, the DeRitter versus Rotolo grappling match to be, be better. You know, I thought DeRitter would actually engage with him no. in a grappling match, and he did not. No. You know, and you look and, you, and then he thought he won. <sighs> Shut up. close. Come on. You can't, you can't, he kept putting himself against the cage because he knew he could defend better there. He just, well, he can defend the take. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he kept, he knew he could defend better there. It just was, yeah, Ty was the smaller guy. Not by much, though. People look at Ty. He's not, he wasn't that much small. He was, he, like height wise, you know, that type of stuff. But he's small. But Ty, Ty's a fucking animal, man. Ty and Cade both. Mm-hmm. But Ty's an animal. He's, he's, he's created with this stuff. I just think that. DeRitter just is used to competing in a cage and understands how, you know, hey, if I'm help, if I'm in this yeah. position here, I, I, there's not much And threat. he tried to make it a little bit dirty. Yeah, that's, he that's did. been the knock on DeRitter, though, for a little bit, to be honest. That he's not like the, he's not the cleanest of fighters and people that have fought him or people that have trained with him. They're like, yeah, he's not really the, you know, he's a little bit of, he's a little bit of a stranger. Like, not stranger. He's a little strange, I should say. A little strange. <laughs> he's a little strange. Yeah, he's a little yeah. out there. All right. Well, hey, I mean, like, Ty, I got to give congratulations to my boy Ty, man. Always been a big fan yeah. of him. I mean, I've known those boys since they were nine, well, nine years old, maybe eight years old. Maybe they've been doing jujitsu since they were three. They're fucking animals. They're great kids, man. Great kids. Been sponsored by Ruka, I think, since they were eight years old, seven or eight years old. Just animal. They're, they, they're just. Have you ever talked to them, John? No, I've met them, but I've never sat and chatted them. with them. No. Super respectful great to talk to so energetic so fun like they just kind of like light up the room when they walk in they fuck with each other they mess around with other people that they're they're really lighthearted and they just they're very friendly very good guys man love to be around them next time they come to a next time we do an la show they'll probably be there so bring them okay. on we'll have to meet up for lunch or something like that and go out with them maybe with pat tenori the ruka guy the guy who owns ruka 
Started Ruka. No one's Ruka. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up our one talk, and uh, let's move on. All right. I want to get your thoughts. Just um, you guys were having too much fun there, so I wanted to dampen us a little Jesus, bit. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what. Jeez. You talk about a guy that just can throw a fucking turd wow. in a punch. You're ball. an asshole. <laughs> I just read the headline. Um, I'm like, what are you doing? Go ahead. Uh, reports of Tony Ferguson being arrested for a DUI um, in Hollywood. Um, apparently flipped a truck and hit, hit another car. And yeah. He's been arrested. So that's the Well, let's, let's just look at it this way. First off, thanks, thank God that Tony is not hurt because... Or, could have been serious or anyone hurt in that hurt. situation nope. or anyone else. Thank God there was nobody else that was hurt from that situation. This is what Uber are for. Okay. You have a Lyft or you have an Uber. If you have drinks, don't drive. You know, I, I just saw Tony in the airport, you know, a month ago, if that, you know, sat there and talked to him and, you know, he was with his wife and stuff. And you don't need this kind of shit, man. That's bad. You know, Tony will make it through it, but don't drink and drive, man. I'm just glad that no one was hurt. Him, there his you go. family, if they were in the car, and whoever was, you know, if someone was in the parked car, or someone was just in the neighborhood or nearby that could have potentially been hurt, thank God no one was hurt. That being said. Don't drink and drive. Yeah, definitely don't drink and drive. But on top of that, just, man, you got so much, man, so much. Like you don't need to the, the, the 28 bucks or the, even the, even the, it's so funny. I had a friend literally tell me like I was out, I was up in, uh, uh, Pleasanton and I was ha having dinner with some friends. I had some drinks and my car was there and I was like, you know what? I drank too much. I'm like, fuck. And so, um, I was like, Oh, I'll just, uh, I, I was basically they're like, yeah, just, you know, uh, Meet me down here at this way. And I'll like, say, I'll just Uber it. You know, I'll meet you down. I'll meet you guys over there. I'm going to take an Uber. I just can't. I just cannot get myself to to not do it. Like, it's so free. I Good. look at I look at the hundred dollars. Don't get me wrong. Like, I have. And I, it's a, it's been a, like you wake up the next day. You go, you dumbass. Like, what were you thinking? You know, and like, you, sure. I felt like I was fine. But you wake up in the morning. You're like, yeah, I wasn't fine. Because you have a little bit of a. Oh, I feel like shit, which means you weren't fine, <laughs> which means you weren't Bingo. fine. And so right. like I, I catch myself going, man, you, you really have to think about what is it? $10,000 fine now in the state of California, automatic year loss of your license. Automatically, he's going to use his, he's going to lose his license for a year and it's an automatic $10,000 fine. Just the automatic $10,000 fine and automatic. How much is the lawyer going to cost? Yeah, I, I just more than that. Yeah. I mean, shitty situation, but. I hope he. I hope he's. I hope he learns from this. I really like Tony, man. I like him a lot. You know, jo, I know you. Jo, do too. I'll give you a story. Hmm. Yeah, I love Tony, but I. I used to be a police officer, and I was not big on, you know, arresting drunks that were driving or anything like that. I just wasn't part of what I liked to do. But I did used to, you know, I stopped everybody. You know, and I saw someone swerving. I, I would, you know, stop them. I would sometimes I would take the keys and lock their keys in the car and I take them home if they were close or something like that. And one time I stop a guy, CHP, right? Oh yeah. He was drunk. Right. And I, I take his car, put my partner in the car, partner drives the car. I drive the guy home. Right. Take the keys to the car, throw them in the car, lock the car at his, you know, so he can't have it or anything. At least that's the way I'm thinking at the time. Not the smartest thing to do, but go through the whole thing and, you know, don't arrest him. Probably about a year later, I broke every vehicle code there was driving. It didn't matter what it was. You know, I'm just being honest, but I never, ever drove drunk. I don't drive drunk. Right. And uh, so I'm speeding and I get lights going behind me on the freeway. Right. Guy pulls me over. Right. Guess who it was? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that guy comes up to the window I'm looking I, and I, I recognize him right away right and I go how you doing officer right he goes uh, license registration I said you know yes sir I said look I'm a, I'm a Los Angeles police officer he goes, oh you're going a little fast there I said yeah I said but at least I wasn't driving drunk like the day, night that I, I took <laughs> you home fucking asshole right <laughs> and he, he looks at me right 
You have a nice day. Uh, <laughs> I said, oh, okay, there you go. Right. So, wow, uh, <laughs> John throwing it right out there. <laughs> oh, I had to, man. I had to. I was like, okay, I'm putting it all on the line on this it's, one. <laughs> oh, man. You son of a gun. Little back pocket pull out, pull that card out. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. All right, next. All right. Um, next story here. Uh, you guys saw during the week, we missed this in the midweek show, but Amanda Nunez has a new opponent um, at UFC yep. in June against, um, sorry, not Raquel Pennington. That was Irene uh, Aldana. Irene, Irene Aldana. And Raquel Pennington is a backup to that. Good. Huh? The, UFC, the, league, you know, like, the UFC is being smart and they're saying, hey, we're not going to get caught in a situation, which they have mm-hmm. in the past. Every promotion does. Where you know we're not going to have our main event fighter, especially if it's the champion sitting there and the opponent falls out, we want to be able to have a fight. So I think it's smart. I agree. You know they're doing they're doing that. You know Juliana was supposed to. You know Aldana was the backup for it. She gets pulled in. Well, then you got to pull someone else as the back backup, and that's going to be Raquel Pennington. Smart move. I go back to the story with Joe Silva. Here's all the people in the weight class. See all the there red? These are all the ones that are hurt. These are the ones that I can use. Got to have a backup. <coughs> and that's, you know, as the promoter, there's nothing you can do about no. it. You know, guys get hurt. Girls get hurt. The, that's the way it is. Yes, do the best you can. Uh, but, good for them. I mean, I'm looking forward to the fight, too. Irene, Irene Aldana is a tough opponent. Somebody new. Yeah. Good stuff. If Amanda decides to make it a stand-up fight, that's a fight. Yeah, I don't think, I think she will. I think, I think Amanda's going to be going after the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, Raquel Pennington and Amanda, I think it'd be a great fight too. And that fight's going to potentially. Happen. I've already seen that. Yeah, fight. but I think I think Raquel's in a different place than she was back then. Might have been. Well, might be. Definitely a lot more focused. I think right now. Do you remember what happened in that? Though? No, I don't remember. It was so long ago. That was it. Was not at the SAP Arena. Not the SAP. No, sorry, LA. Not. It was at. I want to say that was in Brazil. Was it? Yeah, that was the championship fight, and her corner. Raquel came back saying, "Hey, I, I can't see it. Mm. You know, I'm having problems." You know, corner's just putting her back out, and it's like, "Hey, you don't put her out when she's losing as bad." As who she was is. who did Raquel fight in um, at the Staples Center? Was that Holly Holm? Holly Holm. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, that was that was yeah, Holly Holm's uh, first first fight yeah, in the UFC. I was there live at that event. That's why I was yeah. like, I thought she fought Amanda. Nope, she fought Holly. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, next. Get, next. All right, last item here. Cron Gracie uh, has an opinion that MMA fights should be either 15 minutes straight or 25 minutes straight without the round breaks. I really wanted to get you guys' thoughts on this. Josh is a fighter and John is an official. Hold on. Let's, so, let's see. I love Cron. And, uh, Josh, do you remember, well, let's just say, UFC 15, UFC 20. Let's say UFC 20. Well, how, how? What were the rounds? What were the rounds at UFC twenty? Yeah, was it one? One round, one fifteen minute round, right? And it was a fifteen minute round <laughs> with two three minute overtimes. Okay, so basically, what he's saying. So, let's go back to that. Yeah, it works so well. Like, I, it just is not, you know. Crone has an idea about, you know, hey, the way a fight should be. And you saw that with, you know, his fight against Charles Jordan. You know, the length of it wasn't going to change that fight either. You know, and it's just, you know, it's a matter of the you've got you've got to. It does absolutely change the fight by having rounds and having positional changes. You have somebody who is in a good position and the round ends and has to get out of that position. Absolutely. That is part of the fight. But it's something that everyone is prepared for. Yeah, John. Let's be after all these. Let's be honest. Like you just said, after all these years, these athletes they can go forever. Yes. You find that you find the top level athletes they'll go to whenever they'll, they can they can fight an hour straight if they want. Yeah. You know, and they're gonna have their, they're gonna maybe lose in some areas of it, and they're gonna win in some areas of it. And maybe someone will win fully. You know. Uh, went outright but odds are you're gonna end up with 15 minutes or 25 minutes of them picking and choosing when they want to fight the other thing is it doesn't make a difference if you're not going to get good at wrestling if you're not going to get good at the stand-up portion of it all you're not going to win 
the the sport has passed the one dimensional, even sometimes Evolve. the two dimensional fighters. You have oh, to be top tier in almost everything, in almost everything. You know, you've got to have some judo in there. You've got to have some wrestling in there. You've got to have some kickboxing, some Muay Thai, some a little bit of karate, a little bit of Taekwondo. You've got to have it all. You've yeah. got to have it all. If you don't have it all now in these in this this day and age of the UFC or in MMA, the sport itself, I mean, you look at look at guys. No one was really. How many times had Benson Henderson been finished? He got finished by Pettis, I think, the one time, correct? No, RDA, I think, finished him also. He got finished by RDA. He got finished by Pettis with an arm mm -hmm. bar. Um, and then he got finished by Usman recently. In the, in the UFC? Mm -hmm. No, no, just period. Was... Just finished. Oh, uh, period. Uh, just two got... knockouts. Two knockout losses. And then the submission by Usman. Yeah, but he got a submission. Three submissions. Too. So he's been submitted three times? Yeah, because yeah. he had he had uh, he had the. I'm trying to think. It was Pettis submitted him with armbar? Usman, yeah, Usman that was with the rear. He had, he had the Pettis. The Pettis got was that oh, a stoppage Chandler, in the WEC? So Chandler knockout. Um, Usman Chandler submission. Out. Uh, TKO. Oh, sorry, that was in something else. Uh, I mean, that fight he had the with Sanjos knockout. So much. Yeah, the, the RDA. Yeah. Sanjos knocked him out. Uh, Pettis submitted him with the armbar. Yep. Oh, all the way. Pettis, that was decision. a decision. Uh, Rocky Johnson submitted. Oh, wow. Him. He fought oh, Rocky man. Johnson. I fought Rocky Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wow, that's so long ago. Um, yeah. But anyways. Uh, but he's not He's not easy to finish. No. You know, and so. Um, but, the, the, but he got finished by Usman. But he got finished by Usman. But the whole thing was set up by what? A Taekwondo style question mark kick. You know, and that type of stuff needs to be added to everyone's resume, and you know, not resume, but to their repertoire. to their repertoire of what they do. They they there you go. they look need to be big, able to look use at the big words coming out. Of yeah, you. you've got to be able to use things that you're not you're not normally going to use or people haven't seen you use. You've got to mix up your game. You got to continuously evolve with the sport. Yep. And um, that goes for every young fighter. And so Crone, well, right now, he just, he's not. He's a one-dimensional. There's has, no wrestling. It has nothing to do with no, time. No, it does not. Not in this day and age. These athletes are the top-level athletes. I feel like MMA athletes, the, the serious ones, are the top-level athletes in the world. Phenomenal yep. shape, strong for their size and their athleticism. All of these things got to be able to use every single weapon, every single tool of your body, every single thing. I, I just... This this is not this doesn't do anything for the sport. It takes it back to the Stone Age. Yep. Uh, we're not going to finish on that though. We're going to finish on the one last thing. Go ahead. Let's talk about the Marab <laughs> and the jacket. Let's go, buddy. Oh, Marab. We got to talk the, about you, the Sugar Sean jacket. We got to have fun with it. Uh, we got to finish on a on a fun note. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, the so, best um, the best part is he was standing there <laughs> as they were going wearing the jacket. Well, Sean walks in, takes it off so they can both have their shirt off right in front and face each other, and he throws it on the floor like behind him. Marab sneaks up behind him, grabs it. Doesn't really sneak up behind him, just grabs the jacket, puts it. Grabs it you can see him on. holding it, and people are looking at him like, you're holding this jacket. Why? And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. He just puts it on. <laughs> I think it's fantastic, man. Good for him. I mean, I'll, ah. it brings a little bit more uh, spotlight to Marab because he needs it. Right now, he's not getting any love. His style of fighting is not what the UFC normally likes, and so they're not. They're, they don't give him any love. No different than the Corey Anderson situation. No different than uh, Curtis Blades. If you are predominantly just strictly wrestling, they're not going to give you as much love. That just goes to where we were at and uh, in the sport. And so Marab though doing what he does to to get some attention. Good on him. Good on him. I even saw he jump up on the cage, you know, it was like flexing to the crowd, and everything, and they were eating it up. They were loving it. So good on them. Who should be in your? Do you think it's Cejudo or is it Sanhagen? Who should be his next fight? Well, if it, I would, I want Cejudo, but if it's not, if it's not Cejudo, then it should be Sanhagen. I just think stylistically, Marab is it's not a good fight for uh, Sanhagen. It's not a good fight for Sanhagen. Tough one. It's a, it's a really tough, tough one. one. Now, I think Sanhagen's a fucking animal, but I think just the constant grind on the wrestling, you never really get a chance to get your weapons off, you know. And Marab mixes it up with the stand up too. I mean, you look yeah. at Rob, he'll throw wild, crazy stuff to make you defend just so he can get in on the takedowns. The spinning back fists, big spinning kicks, all those things. Because he doesn't care. If you try to take him down, he's like, I can out-wrestle you back up to my feet. 
And if you engage in me, that gives me a chance to grab your legs and just wrestle you back down. So it's it's a real tricky fight for someone like yeah. Corey Sanhagen. You know, um, I'd like to see the Henry fight because, you know, the two of them would end up having to probably stand toe-to-toe and get after it. So that'd be a great fight. Ah, there was, you know what? There was a question though that I had. There was one. Sorry, guys. I'm going to, I'm going to be a, a Twitter nerd right now. There was a question on Twitter here. Yeah. Nerd. Like it. Dun, dun, dun. Let me see what. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, John. You better hurry up because John's got like a long tractor ride back to his shed. I don't know. Thunder. Let me. First time. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't live in a shed. I live in a trailer. Mm, let me <laughs> send it to David here. What's the difference? Hey, David. Dude, the problem is you don't know the difference. I said that to you. It's it's just a it's just a t- uh, text about this, and I know we we've kind of covered a little bit. I know we normally do, uh, but I just sent it to you. It's a tweet. It's basically talking about that the, the the success ratio for guys under the the welterweight division is like two in twenty nine or two in nineteen or whatever it is in terms of being able to to win after the age of thirty six. So do you hold any more clout for the people that have been able to do it, John, in lighter weights that are able to defend their titles, able to win a title or any of that stuff? I mean, T. Wood's the only guy that's been able to do it in the lighter weight class. He's been able to defend, I believe, defend his title after the age of 36. I mean, does that does that change the way you view guys like Anderson Silva and John Jones and their ability to continuously win? No. It doesn't? Uh, no. Even though it's proven that the lighter weights are definitely harder to to win those or to retain them over the age of 36? Well, I mean, it, it's as simple as look at the the lightweight division in the UFC and how many title defenses is the most Three. that you've seen. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That says something about the level of competition and how close, you know, and we say it all the time, Josh, and it's like people don't get it. Cause, and it's okay that you don't get it. Ah, it's, it's, we're not talking there's percentages, you know, percentage points of mm-hmm. one, two, three, four, five percentage points are different. You know, and like I said, you know, being Aljamain Sterling being the champion, you know, being the champion, automatic gives him 10%. He's 10% better. Mm-hmm. Now, is he really 10% better? No, but he's better. But, the difference between the top guys, the differences between Aljamain and Henry, we're talking in the hundreds of a percent yeah. is the difference. That's the difference of, of you know what there is. And when you take a look at the, the lower weight classes, the best athletes in the world fight in the lower weight classes. Mm-hmm. They're the best athletes. There's no doubt about it because they can't do anything else. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm not, when I say can't do it, they can't play football. They're too small. They can't play basketball. They're too small. They can't play baseball, really. They're too small. They're, all of those sports have a size criteria that the, the leagues, that the teams are going to look for. And if you're not within those, you know, structures, it's tough for you to even get a look, you know. And when you're talking 135 pound guy, 125 pound guy, 145 pound guy, you're not getting looks. Yeah. You know, when you're five foot six, five foot seven, five foot eight, you're not getting looks. No one's looking at you. So, where where can you go and be a professional athlete? Fighting, and that's why the lighter weight classes are the best weight classes. When you take a look at it overall, yeah, they have it. They have it the toughest because they have the best competition overall in their weight classes and it's there's no easy matches if you're going to take a look at john jones Mm -hmm. like i still say he's phenomenal but has he had matches that i go that's not that's not a tough opponent for him yeah Mm -hmm. it's not that the guy's not a good fighter but he's not when you take a look at you know comparatively Mm -hmm. how many you know just monsters are being put against those Phantom weights, featherweights, lightweights. Comparatively, time after time after time, that wears on you. It's tough. Yeah. Retaining your title is obviously a lot harder than winning it. I mean, just consistently retaining it the way that John has done it. John Jones has done it. Anderson Silva did it. You know, other fighters. 
it's take a look at Anderson Silva. Okay, I, and, and dude, I love Anderson, and he was a phenomenal champion. But you can take a look at some of the title defenses he had and look at the person that he was fighting, and you go, that's just not that great a fight. Yeah. What, they just didn't have anybody. Yeah, like, I mean, not to knock these guys. I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not saying I'm not names. Say names. Never mind. That's why. I didn't <laughs> I say gonna, any names, but there there uh, are guys out there that you can look and you go, yeah. Yeah. No, yep that's not that great of a match no you saved me from doing that right now <laughs> i almost did it like, uh, like as soon as as soon as i went to say it i was like wait don't do this and then you said yeah. no, i'm not gonna say names i was like brilliant good uh no i just like can we hear what dana said because it's if, uh, a reporter asked him a question that's why <clears throat> yeah let me get the volume up here I don't know. all right and uh, turn this up There we go. No, you didn't. You missed the whole thing. Uh, I want to drop a stat for yeah. you. With Henry Cejudo's loss tonight, fighters who are over 35 below the welterweight division are 2-29 and 29 in title fights. And Tyron Woodley got both those wins. Uh, what does that kind of say about that's not a lower weight. how difficult it is for aging fighters at the lower divisions? Fascinating. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I never thought about it till right now but um yeah it's interesting well uh, well, i I look at i look at 70 and below as the lighter weights i do because they're still fast they're still explosive if you slow down in the 170 70 pound division it's kind of hard to still be competitive and and the wrestlers have kind of found their position at the 170 pound like weight class a lot of top level wrestlers find their way into 170 you don't find a lot of top level wrestlers at 155 or 145. There's good ones in there. Don't get me wrong, but it seems like you've got Usman, you've got, you know, GSP became a really good wrestler. Koscheck, Fitch, you know, uh, Johnny Hendricks. I mean, you, f- it seems like the 70 pound division is the one that finds where all the NC2A champs or all Americans or Olympic, whatever, you know, like they all end up okay. in that weight class. So the speed, once the speed of the takedown goes away or once the, the explosiveness of that goes away, then they start losing. And that's usually around that age of 35, 36 years old. Yeah. You get to the, you get to the 85 to the, to the 205 and the heavyweight speed sure plays a yeah, factor. But, but hold on. Let's take a look. And you know, you sit there and, you're, and I'm, I'm taking nothing away from Tyron Woodley, but let's take a look at those fights that you're saying he got those wins in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darren Till. Yeah. Okay. Not a wrestler, not not good takedown defense, good striker, but not dangerous on the ground. So you look and you go, was there comparatively looking at the potential problems for somebody or advantages? That's a that's a tailor made fight for a guy like Tyron. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so, but then you're just kind of more proving my point that it has to do with the opponent along with um, the speed of it all. Like, he, 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 you just need to get in on the takedown on that. Yeah. yeah. So, but the speed of his takedown and someone who doesn't know how to wrestle at all in terms of Darren Till, um, your opponent makes a big difference. Sure. But that's that. Ab- I don't know. I, I, just, I just look at it and if you want to say 170, I understand what you're saying, but. They're, those are not smaller guys. No, until went up to eighty five after that. And I mean, oh, a one seven year when he's fighting is one hundred ninety pounds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I get it. So not not smaller guys. All right. Well, hey, we're gonna wrap up on that, and uh, we had a little fun today. And uh, sorry, I think we, I don't know if it, it ran. How did you think it ran today? How did you think it ran? Today? Run today? It went to good. To, went to good today. Let's I was do. flying all day. Call me yeah. low energy Josh. So, kind of like low energy Jeb. Low, low energy. <laughs> low energy Josh. Um, yeah, a little bit of a long flight, but hey, I had some fun today. Um, let me see what else. There was something else I was going to tell you, but then I just forgot. Too much, too much going on. Too much going on. Too much. All right. Well, hey, uh, make sure you guys hit remember that. it for the next time yes. we get together. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and a uh, little thumbs up. That algorithm will help us there when you hit that thumbs up. I want to thank you guys for continuing to support us and watch us and uh, hit the Wayne and Merch.com. Pick up some of our short sleeve shirts. New designs are out. And we want to thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. I got a little blurry there, Dave. Yeah, just a little Bink. bit blurry. Ooh. There we are. Look at that. Very nice. I'm seeing clear now, my guys. John, I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you in see what? 20, I'm gonna see you in about 36 hours in Paris. 
Yeah. Jeez. It's getting there. Whew. Whew. Line bikes. Ah, yes. Your turn, buddy. Get ready to pedal. Let's go. Take us away. Pedal. All right. Everyone out there, I hope you enjoyed the fights as much as we did. Congratulations to one championship on coming to the United States and having a great show, making everyone have a good time there in Colorado. And I really appreciate the fighters being in shape because they all came in to fight. Not an easy place, as you said. For everyone out there, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you.